there's a rough and ready kinship among men who drive a pen through the frozen wastes of balance sheets and ride the old 810 that thunders east from Amersham, piled high, hell-bent for town, and the cold-eyed men of the old 810 will seldom let you down. Save one. Of him I'll tell you, for I used to call him friend. We'd costed and accounted from Cheam to Ponder's End. We'd ride the roughest audits, and I'd trust my life to Jack if we struck a trial balance and it tried to hit us back. But I recall a day in August, with the market on the rise, when the lust for yellow gold was lighting fires in brokers' eyes, and the cheap cologne of typists, with their come-and-get-it smiles, couldn't mask the smell of danger hanging heavy on the files. If you've ever walked the debit trail, you'll know the smell I mean. It's the reek of damp umbrellas with a touch of wintergreen, and the slowest man to sniff that wind will finish, like as not, with a cardboard-bottomed pension and a nickel coffee pot. So I walked into the office, moving slow and stepping light, then paused and let my eyes take in the room from left to right. Bigsy, the chief cashier, was shooting craps against the wall, but this normal-seeming look of things, it fooled me not at all. The others stood around the bar, their liquor in their paws. But Kid Branson, by the ticker tape, was moving of his jaws, a chewing gum, and sweating some. And plainly, I could see, the bunch of them was edgy as they waited there for me. I waited for the message, and quite soon I caught it clear. "'Cause Big Jack Snook, my partner, stood there pulling at his beer. "'And on his arm leaned Roney O'Lil, the girl who I called mine. "'And the way she eyed his slide rule kind of laid it on the line. "'Jack looked at me, and I could see the madness in his eyes, "'the raging footsy fever no poor devil can disguise. "'The signs were plain.' But all the same, I had to cut him down, or bear the name of coward on the old 810 to town. Cause there's a red-hot prime commandment nature threw into her box. The wolf can take the caribou, but skunk don't eat the fox, and jackals eat the offal that the grizzly leaves behind. Big Jack, he broke that golden rule in grabbing what was mine. Jack spoke. Say, John, I think I've been too long at number two. So now, you see, I want your key to the executive loo. I'll take your woman and your job. I'll prove I'm twice the man. I'll eat up in the penthouse suite while you chew grits and spam. Well, I could tell the talk was over and the action would be soon. Bigsy dropped his dice and ran for cover down the room, and then Big Jack pushed Lil aside, and his hand began to dip to the ivory-handled staple gun slung low upon his hip. He was fast, but I was careful. He was mad, but I stayed cool. Cause when the lead starts flying, take your time's the golden rule. Then you live to draw your pension and cash your chips in bed. I pulled my Rexel peacemaker and drilled Jack through the head. They buried him in bonds expired, his leisure on his chest. And of all the friends I ever had, I still count Jack the best. But it was him or me, my friend, and so he had to die. And now he's index linked with the accountant in the sky. There's a rough and ready kinship among men who drive a pen through the frozen wastes of balance sheets and ride the old 810 that thunders east from Amersham, piled high, hell-bent for town. But watch those men of the old 810 for the one 
who'll let you down. 